Uh, it's very hot today. It's 42 degrees and I'm ironing. The sign is down. It was MacGyvered. G'day and welcome to a new episode of I Tried, a series where I try new things for the very first time that are costuming, cosplay or sewing related. If you're new here, hi, my name's Kiralee, welcome to the channel. If you're a regular, welcome back. Today it is all about markets and I am doing my very first craft market as a vendor. As a side note, I love craft markets. That's something that Terry and I share and one of our favorite things to do, especially around Christmas time, is go to as many craft markets as we can because we just love seeing all of the handmade stuff. And well, a year ago, basically to the day, I started my own company and part of that company is Scrap Epic, where I make epic things out of scrap fabric or fabrics that have been donated or given to me or I have inherited them. Basically fabrics that would otherwise end up potentially in the trash. Now I will say that I started this video earlier last year, about middle of last year I think, because I was actually wanting to do this video and do some craft markets for Christmas because I love craft markets and Christmas is such a good time. But I kind of lost my courage and decided that I was just going to attend the craft markets and enjoy them rather than selling. I am now kicking myself but that is what happened. But instead, in February 2022, I did my first craft market. So in this video, I will be taking you through the journey of creating all the stuff, as well as, you know, doing all of the admin stuff and getting all the bits and pieces that you need for a market. It's really quite expensive, but I'll come back and talk to you more about that later. For now, Enjoy! See you at the end of the video. Alright, so this is what we have. We have all of these pieces of fabric that have been cut into the strips for the oversized scrunchies. And I don't feel like leaving the house today or really showing my face on camera. So perfect day to sew all these up and to really get a crack on the market prep for the oversized scrunchies at least. I'm at the moment sitting in my car. I'm about to go into the shops which are just over there because I have to buy a few items for my setup. I've already got a few, so I've already got a table and I'll probably borrow another table from my mum. I've already got the three by three, um, what you call it? Oh my gosh, brain melting down. Kazebo. there we are, that's the word. <laughs> uh, and I also have the pegboard which I will be using for the majority of my oversized scrunchies that's the plan at least so what I also need to do is I need to go to Kmart and get a few things there so I, I'm looking at getting two foldable seats like just cheap seats that I can get for Terry and I to sit on uh, also I want to get a lettering board for basically putting out my prices and then I also want to see if I can get something to hold like the mini scrunchies or the, or the regular size scrunchies so like something like donut stands or something like that because I kind of want to keep the pegboard just for the oversized scrunchies because that's like my main product at this point in time. So I've got to do that and then I need to go to Bunnings, um, which is just down the road. Um, also, I will mention that if it's not in Kmart, I'll double check Big W as well. Um, but yes, I do need to go to Bunnings as well as I need to get some dowels so that I can cut that down for the pegboard because it only came with like seven pegs for 35 holes. Uh, and then I also need to get some 19 or 20 gauge wire. So that's that's. That's what I need today, and then I do also need to go to Officeworks because I want to get a card reader for um, Square so I can take electronic payments, and I also need to um, get like something that I can put like the boards into to stand them up. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to find some sort of way with like L brackets to attach them to the back and then weight it down. 
I would rather just have something that's stable that I can just like place it down but we shall see I do have some old brackets at home so if all, if all else fails I can do that but for now I'm here I've got my mask I'm gonna mask up and off we go shopping and here we go here's the letter board they don't seem to have any other extra letters so we'll just have to see what I can do with this hello they're here <laughs> yes thank you oh okay well that was a little bit of a failure um Kmart only had one of the things that I was looking for out of the three things that I was looking for uh which was the lettering uh board but I also managed to get some extra letters for that and I did find a little easel that I thought was three dollars turned out to be six dollars so hopefully I can put the lettering board on top of the easel i will try that out tonight if it doesn't work i think i will return the easel i know it's only six bucks but i am trying to keep the cost down as much as possible in regards to the stall setup um so you know let's let's try it. anyway i'm gonna move on to bunnings and see what they have there so let's see if i can grab what i need from there bingo so i've just found the chairs I've decided to purchase three of these. Probably needed four, but I'm going to get three and just cut them whoop, a little bit shorter than the ones that I have currently. And I've got some wire and I've got this piece of MDF, which I will turn into my own mini scrunchie rack. So I couldn't help myself. I took like an hour to put this all together and it's still not like spaced out great, but I think it looks pretty good to begin with. So this is what I'm thinking pricing wise and what I'm going to offer. And so now I just have to make all the stuff. But how cool does that look? <laughs> all right, so it is the next day and Terry and I went everywhere around Officeworks and, and the shops and everything, trying to find a square reader. Apparently, the chip that is used within the square reader is basically out of stock absolutely everywhere and as such the square reader is not available anywhere so i freaked out <laughs> and because you don't you need you need to have the square reader or some sort of card reader in this kind of environment um with COVID and everything and people just not carrying cash anymore so I was very, very upset. <laughs> and so I basically came home, kind of vented to my friends and had a little bit of a look. So Amazon had like the chip reader, which apparently is like the newer version of the Squarespace reader, uh, not Squarespace, Square reader. But I've seen those. I'm not a massive fan of those because I would also need to organize for a change of cord because I've got an iPhone not an Android um, and I just wanted the reader because of the fact it's really straightforward there's no cords and yeah it's just a little little more seamless so I then decided to order it online from Square directly it is on back order however they do say that it will be shipped between one and two weeks that may mean that if I get to do the forest field uh, night market, which is the first one, I may not have that for then. Which is not great, but it would also mean that the first one that I do, I wouldn't have any uh, card payments that I'd have to be worrying about. But in the same token, I'd rather be worrying about that if it meant getting the sales. Um, but the good news about that one is that it's literally outside of a shopping center. So there is ATMs nearby. Anyway, I, in other news, I have got basically everything that I'll need for my display. I still need to source a big table, but I'm thinking I will be able to steal that from my parents. I've got like one that is like a good size, it's just not wide enough. Um, so hopefully I can steal theirs because it is a bit wider. So there's that. And yeah, I just need to make all the stock. 
So yeah, but one other thing that I am doing and I will show you in just one moment is I am currently organizing for a banner. I'm going for the cheapest option that I can find Eden Vistaprint. Uh, Vistaprint was going to be like $36 for a vinyl sign, but I had to have it delivered, which is fine. But I was like, mm, I want to pay less than that. Um, so I went to Officeworks, good old Officeworks, and they have an indoor banner which has a satin, which is printed on satin cloth. Not sure exactly what that means. It is going to be flimsy, I am aware of that. But I figure it's only $15, so you know, let me just show you. All right, so I've got the site up here. So this is my brand and I figure that if I ever change this at least $15 doesn't actually break the bank all that much. It is the smallest size that they've got for a banner but I've kind of measured that and it is still a good size to have on the front of a table. That's all fine. There's that satin cloth and then I've also asked for eyelets and it's 15 bucks. So I think I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put this one through and organize for it to be picked up so I don't have to pay for delivery. But yes, after I do this, I do need to start working on getting the stock up because I do have some. I will show you that as well. Snap to over here. Um, in one of the clips earlier on, you would have seen all of these in strips of fabric. Uh, that was actually done quite some time ago. Uh, it's a clip from quite some time ago. Uh, but basically I've made them all up. I just need to add in the tags for this. So these are the oversized scrunchies. I do need to go through because I have sold some. So I do need to figure out how many I need to make of each color so that I have three or four of each. And then underneath here, and then in here, what I've got is I've got some regular size scrunchies uh, in these up here and I'll probably make a bit more and then I've also got this product which is the mum and kiddo scrunchies so it's basically an oversize and a regular size as a pair and they will be sold for I believe $15 each so oversized scrunchies are $10 each or three for 25 the regular scrunchies are six dollars each or three for 15 and then the pair of the oversized and the regular is $15. So yeah, I'm getting there. I want to get all the scrunchies done and I need to put tags in like all of them. Um, but I want to get scrunchies made up first and then I'll put the tags in and make sure that both of these are good to go. And then I will start working on the wide headbands and masks uh, because they're the other two things that will be there and also the bows so i have got bows in here for my bow sale which will be possibly the day after uh the first one but the first market if forest field goes ahead um but i may just i, I want to make some bows that are just purely for the market but i think what i'll do first is i'll get the scrunchies done the headbands done and the masks done and then we'll see if i've got time to make some more bows All right, so this afternoon I went and I picked up this, which I am super excited to open because it is my banner. It arrived like three days earlier than what they said it was going to, so I haven't opened it yet. So let's see. All right. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's awesome. And there's really not too much like pixelating as well, which is awesome. There's a little bit of a water stain by the looks of things on that. But you know what? This is probably going to get a lot worse. So, oh, that looks so cool. That's going to look so cool on the front of my table. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm happy with that being my first size. I was concerned it wasn't going to be big enough. But I think that that's a really good size for a table. And... It's not bad, 15 bucks. So yay, go off this works. So that's awesome. And I have had notification that my square reader has been shipped. So like I was expecting it to be on back order, 
and it shipped the next day. So hopefully that will arrive within the next week or two because it's coming from over east, I believe. So it's all coming together. I think I have most of the things that I need now. The sad thing is that this will be the first month that I've almost not broken, like I've, I've, I've spent more than I've earned under Kiralee Cosplay. Like I've been trying to keep this to a minimum how much I'm spending on it. But January 2022, which is the month in which we are filming this right now at the very end of it all, um, I think I'm positive like six bucks. So, you know, thank you to the sale that I got and the workshop that I did and AdSense through YouTube. So thanks for watching the ads, guys. Uh, it helps me out. That basically paid for all of this, which I'm really, really thankful for. So, yay, okay. Now I have to get back to making scrunchies. I've got to do a stock take of that, stock take of that. But first what I need to do is I need to make up all of these labels because all of the scrunchies that I've prepped do not have labels in them and there's a lot of them and I will need to print off more so I need to change the ink cartridges load up the paper and print out more of those as well but I think I'll do this pile of labels first I think there's about 96 labels here so yeah that will get the majority of them done but I know that there's still going to be more all right I'm procrastinating now Yay! I'm really happy with this banner. <laughs> All right, so update time. I have managed to complete the tags that I had cut out. I still don't think it's gonna be enough for what I've got over there to do, but it's going to do a good chunk of them. So the next thing I need to do is do a stock take of the scrunchies that I have to see which ones I need to make more of and then get that fabric if I still have it. Um, because that's the nature of Scrap Epic. Once it's gone, it's gone. And then, you know, make them. So I've spent the last hour cutting out all of these fabrics. Um, these are to essentially get my stock back up because of the fact that I've got a few that are no longer, like I've got no pieces left of the flamingo pattern or the coral paisley pattern. I've had to pull some other fabrics that I thought would make some good scrunchies. So I'm going to bring back the boodles. That's the last of that fabric. I've got some uh, Jack Skellington Nightmare Before Christmas fabric. And I've also been encouraged to make these Encanto uh, themed ones because it's black with these really bright floral kind of lace it's really really pretty so yes so I'm gonna stop have some lunch and then what I'm going to do is start sewing all of these up So look what arrived! It's my square reader! Oh my gosh, guys, I cannot believe it. I was freaking out about this and it arrived yesterday. So literally it took one week. So I ordered last Wednesday and then it arrived on Tuesday, which is yesterday. <sighs> I thought this was not going to come in time. I am so happy. So basically I have everything because this morning I went and I picked up the trestle table from my parents because it is bigger than the one that I've got in terms of width. And yeah, so I think I've got pretty much everything. I just need to finish off making the displays, but I can do that at a later date. It won't take too long. It's just too hot at the moment. I have all of the scrunchies that need to be, the new ones that need to be done up. And I still have all of the other ones that are over here behind the camera that I still need to add tags into. They need to get done, so that will be my next task because once I have all the tags into the scrunchies, then the scrunchies are done and they're prepped, they're ready for market, and that's going to be my biggest item. So I will feel better once that's all done. And then I want to start making the wide headbands and then some bows and some masks. So that's kind of where my brain is. I have potentially only like two weeks until the first market if the forest field market goes ahead but if i don't have all the stock ready to go for then then so be it 
uh, I would be happy going with honestly just some um, some hair hair wired headbands and the scrunchies to be honest if that's my first market then so be it so we're getting there we're getting there so it's a little bit later in the day and I have got into my curly cosplay uniform which is my pajamas and I got a really exciting text message I have got confirmation or at least pre-confirmation that I will be attending the forest field market which is on the 11th of February which is in 11 days because it's currently the 1st of February so I'm really excited about that I've never been to the forest field um, night markets I've been to the Kalamunda one but um, they're run by the same people I was planning on having Kalamunda potentially as my first one which is at the end of the month but now that this has come up, it looks like it's going to be a whole lot sooner. So I have to get my groove on and really get all this uh, prep done. So <laughs> let's keep making those scrunchies or at least finishing them off because they are actually all made. They just need all the tags put in them. So I ran out of labels. So that's what I'm making now. I've got my pieces of fabric here, which is just like a cotton, a plain white cotton. I've got my transferable uh, printed out label here. And these are the only oversized scrunchies that still need to have the labels put in them. But I still have all of the regular size scrunchies that I need to put the label in. And I'm tossing up with the headbands, the wide headbands, whether I should put a label in, label in those. So I'm just, I just printed out two sheets. There is, I think, about 77 per sheet. So that's what, 100 and... Uh, maths is hard. 150... Four, I think. Anyway, maths is hard. Uh, it's very hot today. It's 42 degrees and I'm ironing. Great. Anyway, oh gosh, I really have to wash that. Oh well. <laughs> Good evening. So it is now 9.30 at night on the sad day before the market the following Friday. And I have just finished putting together all of the scrunchies so every single scrunchie has a tag in it. So this box here and this bag is absolutely full with the oversized scrunchies, which is my main product. They're done, finally. Uh, and then this box down here is full of the regular size scrunchies and also the mum and kid pair scrunchie. So really happy with that. Tomorrow what I'm going to do is um, we're going to set up the uh, canopy to make sure that that's all fine. I also need to cut some wood and create some uh, displays and do some, you know, gluing and all of that. And I also want to cut out and make the headbands and the masks. I may be overreaching, but I should have most of the day. So fingers crossed I can get it all done. Excuse my messy backyard, but we have our gazebo up. So once we figured out how it goes up, it's actually not too hard to get up, but it really is a two person job and I'm really scared to set this up by myself come uh, next Friday. The other thing is that I didn't know we have a light in here. In terms of the amount of light that comes out of it though, it's not great, but it's better than nothing. So considering I'm doing a night market, that's good. We've just tried to find another light that we have that we were going to actually stick up here because it's magnetic, but we can't seem to find it, which is really annoying. So we might have to go and see if we can buy another version of that. But yes, this is the gazebo with the light, it's three meters by three meters. And yeah, it's pretty good. We have over here a brick, on the one of the poles and on the diagonal pole as well because I don't have any weights officially yet um, so Terry's gonna see if he can get me some sandbags which would be lovely there's the dogs they quite like the extra shade uh, but yeah I might actually take some bricks with me and put them on the different corners because they're not actually too bad and the corners are actually like they're a little triangle which means that it's pretty good to be able to just rest something flat on the top of it. 
so yeah we're gonna leave this up today I think and then put it down this evening just see how it holds up with a little bit of wind and everything like that so over here I have the little stand that I've made so hopefully it will hold it's just hot glued together but yeah it will be fine and then in this bag I now have the 35 pegs that fit perfectly into the big board so that will be good for the oversized scrunchies. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the wire headbands and also the masks. Alright so it's now 7 o'clock at night uh, on, the, on the Sunday uh, so I'm really running out of time here but I managed to get all of my wired headbands made. This was my prototype that I'm wearing now. I've actually made these ones to be a bit longer and a bit thicker um, because I feel like this one was a little bit too narrow. I like a little bit of volume so that's what we did here. So I've got 11 here. Uh, the pink one on the end I am actually going to wear on market day I think so I'll have 10 to sell and yeah so I'm glad that I've got another product and so what I plan on doing now is just making some masks as well and that way I will have essentially three different products but five really because I'll have the wide headbands, the masks, the oversized scrunchies, the regular scrunchies and then the mum and kiddo pair. So that's the plan, it's getting there, I need to get the masks done ASAP so hopefully I can cut out a whole lot tonight and then tomorrow start assembling them. So that's the plan, that's the plan, we're always there, almost there. Alright, so I'm just about to head to bed and I managed to cut out all the pieces for the masks. So over here I've got the male masks, so there's a total of six. And then over here I've got the female masks and there is a total of ten. So I've got the lining out of calico and then the cotton out of fabric. So I will sew them tomorrow because I need to get to bed. <laughs> Good morning. So last night I did a whole lot of work and I made all of the masks. Let me just grab them. So here they are. Here are the masks. The ones with the white elastic are the female masks. I've got 10 of them and the ones with the black elastic are the males and I've got six of them. Now I did have six, I did have 10 of these because I accidentally cut out uh, four lots of the skulls. <laughs> Oh well, um, but that's all good. So I've got these, so I've got the headbands and the masks, masks now, so we'll see how they go. It's coming up this Friday, it's currently Tuesday. So um, yes, I'm very glad that now all of my market stock has been prepped. Uh, today I really have to get the cash for you know the change and all of that because you need change and card and I have got the card reader I tried it out last night and it all worked just had to fid fid fidget with a few little bits and pieces on it but that's all good to go for Friday and I want to do a table set up so that I can see how everything's going to lay out so that come Friday it will be a smooth setup. So, but yeah, I, I'm feeling good. I think I've got everything that I need. Fing, fingers crossed, tap wood, all of that jazz. Um, yes, I'm very excited, but also very nervous. Okay, so it is now Wednesday evening and I have just set up my table. And I think this is the way that I'm going to set it up at the market. I've decided, and I think I may have mentioned this, that personally I don't actually like going into booths. I like everything to be relatively towards the front so I don't feel like I'm enclosed in um, and I feel like I buy more in that kind of setup. So I've tried to put everything onto one table and kind of have different heights and everything like that just so that it is really interesting to the eye and this is super colorful. It looks a little bit jam-packed but I'm not actually upset about that. It looks full which is nice. So over here I've got the wool of the oversized scrunchies. Um, now <laughs> my mistake I still I have like an extra set of scrunchies which is, are the black lace that just don't fit on here. Um, we'll see what sells and that way I've got a backup if I sell out of one type scrunchie. 
Then directly under, I have the wide headbands. I did have the other scrunchies, like the um, the mum and kiddo pair, uh, straight underneath here. And Terry said that it all looks a bit cluttered and too much scrunchy, and I agree because he's very good like that and can pick that up. So I put the wide headbands here, and then over here, I've got the regular scrunchies on the little stand. And then I have the masks just underneath and nice color coded black straps is male, white straps are female, but that's not saying that vice versa can't wear them. It's just that these are slightly bigger. And then lastly, I've got the mum and kiddo mask over here directly underneath the price list. So I think that works really well. I'm actually really glad I don't have the bows that I was actually firstly intending to bring to the market as well because I don't think it would have fit. I would have had to have a second table and I just want to see how this goes first. So yes, I really, really like this setup. I, it, it, I'm very excited, also nervous, and I really hope that come Friday I will get my money back that I've spent on the stall and maybe some extra to help pay for the rest of the setup. Um, there's one last thing that I think I need to get and I'll either get it tomorrow night or Friday morning and that is the lighting because our light that I was going to use has just gone missing. We've searched everywhere. Uh, so I need to get some sort of other light to use and possibly a power bank if we can't seem to find our power bank. So oh. fingers crossed. All right, so I'm currently sitting on my bed uh, patting the ever so lovely taffeta. Yeah, that's right. You're a princess. Uh, as it is market day, I need to get there at 2. It's currently 11. Um, and I have written a list of everything that I need to pack the car with. So I've got my list here. I won't bore you with it. Um, but I think I've got everything that I need. But then I was thinking about it and having a little bit of a look at the setup, which is go with which which is tonight and i am on the corner and behind me is going to be tables and chairs because it's right near all the food vendors i've only got one wall so i think the wall will need to go to the back of the tent so that, that will block out you know the people eating their food or just sitting down and relaxing the but that will mean that the side will then be open see i, I kind of wish that i was more in the middle i suppose because that way at least you know i'd have hopefully another canopy or something like that with a back wall and that way we were closed in and that way i could put up the wall maybe to the side or something like that but i think what I will need to do is put the wall up at the back and that means that my sides are then open. One side I will have someone there, but the other side is going to be open to where the food trucks are. Um, and ah, I know it's going to be a fair amount of traffic there. So what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking maybe I even change around my setting and I take a second table. I had always just envisioned having one table up the front so people don't have to come right into the tent because I know personally, I hate doing that. Um, I know that when I go to markets, if you could have your tent, if you could have your your items right on the inside so and your price is clearly displayed, that way I don't feel pressured to like have to kind of you know go into another space that's like it doesn't feel safe for me and i know that's stupid it's a market of course it's safe but like psychologically i don't want to necessarily show commitment uh unless i'm you know unless i'm comfortable with what is being sold and I think there's some sort of psychology around that because I know that when I've spoken to other people, they feel the same as well. And I have noticed that the stalls that are mostly having their displays right at the front rather than, you know, on on racks and kind of all around the sides of their booth tend to do better. So I was going to do that and then I was like, ah, oh, but I don't know. Like if I've got the side open, that will really just be awkward to see like Terry and myself sitting there 
So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll bring a second table. So I do have a second table which is narrower and maybe I can space some of the items across those tables um, just to kind of block us from the people who are buying food but also you know maybe entice them to come on over so I can do that it's a but it's not the same table as what I have um, you know the table that I planned on using was my mum and dad's table which is nice and wide and, and large um, this one is adjustable height so I think that the height will be similar but the width is quite narrow so maybe on that one I will put you know my my regular scrunchies and maybe the masks and the hair ties or something like that uh, and I'll have to have the price list right in the center on the corner which is kind of annoying um, and I only have the one price list because I, I thought I was only gonna have one uh, one table um, I'm gonna take it my mum's gonna be there to help set up with me and she's got a really good eye for these things so I'll get her opinion as well I'll take the extra table I think I've got a lace tablecloth that will go over the top of it it's not as nice as the plain white you know tablecloths that mum and dad lent me um, that were from my grandfather's old lodge days um, so but you know we're just we're gonna make do we're gonna make do it uh, this is so stressful oh my gosh yeah the anxiety has been high everyone's like are you excited are you excited and I'm like I am nervous I am excited I've wanted to do this for a while but I'm also really anxious I really hope that I make a sale like it would be nice to get a sale from someone whom I don't necessarily know um, but also you know maybe make a little bit of the money that I've spent on getting all the supplies um, I mean, this is definitely not my last market. I've already paid for a second market, but you know, at the moment I know that I would be running on a loss until I can cover all the costs of all of the things that I've had to buy. <laughs> one funny thing was one of the ladies at work yesterday said to me, oh, don't worry, you're going to sell out. And I was like, I really hope not because I've got a market in two weeks and it took me two weeks and more to make all of my stock and I am tired. So yes, uh, speaking of which I have had a rest this morning. So I got up early and went to the gym and then uh, came and just rested. That's why I'm back in my PJs. I have it a shower. I am clean. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up the car then probably have some lunch and then start getting ready and then head down for 2 p.m. All right, so this is the back of my car everything's in there I think the only thing I might add will be some sticky tape because I haven't got that and that might come in handy so I'll put that with my stationery and yeah it's all packed in it's actually less than I less full than I thought it was going to be but cool let's get myself dolled up after I have some lunch all right so here I am all dressed for the market my petticoat is in my car I plan on putting that on after the store has been set up. I also have the matching mask for this outfit in my pocket. Yes, this dress has pockets. This is one I made kind of on a whim. Um, it was actually a, a um, quilt cover or a doona cover. And yes, so I turned it into this dress with a full circle skirt and matching scrunchie and matching mask. It is a cotton based one, so it's all fine. I just wanted to wear this because of the fact that I wanted to show what Scrap Epic was about. It was about using fabrics that may have otherwise been thrown away or discarded because this was a doona cover that was uh, donated and bought it for two bucks and I made it into a dress and then with the leftover fabric which is what Scrap Epic is all about is uh, is the fact that I made the scrunchie and the mask so kind of hopefully giving a little bit of representation and if anyone asks about the name which I'm sure that they won't 
but you know I can I can explain it and give them visual aids so that was my thought process about wearing this dress and it is really really cute especially with the petticoat underneath uh, I am already boiling because it's just going on 1.30 at the moment which is getting into the hottest part of the day and uh, it's not as hot as yesterday yesterday was 39 or something and I think today is like 32 but I do not do good at all with heat so setup is going to be a treat so I'm going to wrap this here and then I'll take you to the market and I will show you what's going on there. And funny thing, I packed the entire car and I forgot to put in the chairs. So in my undies, I ran out to my car. Luckily the garage door was down and I put the chairs in. I really hope that there's no spiders in the chairs because of the fact that they were stored in the garage. I did kill a spider on my way out. Fun. here is my stall the sign is down it was MacGyvered because it decided that it wanted to commit suicide as soon as we got here and it destroyed itself one of my prongs also committed suicide so that's now held up by sticky tape it's going so well um, but I have put it all out um, the side is open but I put the little table here so that way you know, it's a bit of extra room, so it looks good. Everything's spaced out, doesn't look too cluttered. And a big shout out to my mum, who didn't want to be in the video. She's over there, out of out of frame. And uh, she helped me set this all up. So, yay! Woohoo! Okay, so it's currently 5.30, and I've made a total of four sales. Um, so, almost covering the booth cost at the moment. It's picked up a little bit. Um, but it's still quite quiet but you know it's all right and Terry's here Terry's here yay so I'm gonna show you a little bit of what the market's looking like now it's in swing it's now eight o'clock uh, so we've got another hour left it's really quiet and down again which is fine like we have had a very busy like not busy it wasn't very busy but it was it was steady for the majority of time and Terry's in the back wearing one of the masks being awesome showing it all off um, so did, sold quite a few of these um, and managed to restock a whole lot actually sold out of one of the colors in full uh, but I've got some more fabric at home <laughs> yes he looks lovely with scrunchies um, so I'll need to make more of those later um, sold a whole lot of the wide headbands sold only about two or three of the small ones sold a whole lot of the masks and have learnt that I should be making children's mask so I will definitely make that for the next mask uh, sale or next market I'm losing English words uh, and I have sold I think one or two pairs of the uh, mum and kid pairs so overall pretty good um, other stalls are saying that it's been quite quiet um, so you know I feel very blessed that I have been pretty steady and I got some lovely compliments so Yay. Anyway, I will speak to you later in, and give you the full wrap up of this tomorrow or a few days later. Over to that. It's now a couple of days after the market and I thought it's time that we should have a recap and talk about how things went, shall we? So I will start off with what I sold and what I made dollar figure wise because you're probably real interested in that. I know that when I watch these videos that's like, tell me the money, tell me the money. 
But before I do that, I will just let you know that I got told by other vendors, at least two other vendors, that this was actually a really slow market because of the fact that new COVID restrictions had just come into play where you had to be masked at the event or at least the attendees had to be masked at the event. Um, and also the fact that uh, you had to show your double vaccination certificate. I did hear that they weren't actually checking everyone's double vaccination certificate. It was just if you were called upon, you had to be able to show them that you had been double vaccinated. That turned a lot of people off apparently and quite a number of vendors actually boycotted the whole event, which I think is quite sad. But it did mean that there was a spot for me, I guess. <laughs> so firstly, what I sold, I sold 10 face masks, five wire headbands, one mum and kid scrunchie pair, five regular scrunchies, and 36 oversized scrunchies. That to me is just absolutely amazing. I really had no idea how the oversized scrunchies were going to go because they're not hugely popular in Australia. A lot of people think that they're just too big and that's why I made the regular scrunchies as well, a little selection there. But people just were drawn to them and I think that was because of the display because it was up you know you want to make sure that you've got different heights because whatever's eye level is going to catch your eye the most and really it was like a flower wall people said to me that it looked like a flower wall so it did its job and I've learned from that so more on that a little bit later but in terms of dollar figure I'm just looking at my notes here so cash wise I made $64 and for FPOS, I made $455.16. That's for the fees taken out of it. So that comes to a grand total of $519.16. Considering the other vendors, some of them complained that it was very, very quiet to the point that they hadn't even made their stall fee back by the end of the night, which was $70. I am so thrilled with this number. Of course, I didn't brag about it. That's just poor form. But like, you know, internally I was like, sweet, okay. Maybe there is a spot for markets and me selling at them. All right, cool. So I will say that I am super, super happy with the amount that I earned. However, I will also mention that I have not yet come out of the red because I actually spent $639.30, according to my little sheet here, in regards to everything that I needed for the initial costs that were associated with having everything for the market, uh, along with the stall fee and the insurance fee. The good news is, is that moving forward, I have all of those costs, or most of them, sorted. I just would need to pay for the stall fee now. So yay, successes. Let's now go on to that which I learnt. The first thing that I learnt is sunscreen. Wear it, Kiralee, wear it. I am so, so fair. And literally I was out in the sun just setting everything up and I got so burnt. It's not fun. It's really not fun and the day after it was so hot and I could hardly sleep. My neck was so burnt. So yes, sunscreen. The second thing I learnt which was really surprising to me. I thought it might come into play but I didn't think it would come into play as much as it did. Was that you really need to make sure that you have a bubbly personality and that you're dressing appropriately. And when I say dressing appropriately, dress for your brand. A lot of people were there and they were sitting back in their chairs and they were in like jeans and like comfy t-shirts and like a tank top or you know stuff like this, which is absolutely fine. Like I'm no, no shade to that whatsoever. I can't judge them. They're all veterans compared to me. But I went there in my lime green dress with pink flowers. I had a matching mask, I had a matching scrunchie, I put like a headband in to, to like also show off the headband as well as the scrunchies and the masks because I was selling those as well. But I was doing all of that to showcase my brand. Fun, energetic, and you know, showing off, hey I made this dress and with the scraps of the fabrics I made a and B and like this C is also a similar kind of project. 
and on top of which because it was such a bright color and I had like the full fake eyelashes on and when I had my mask off I was wearing like red lipstick underneath it all but you know I made sure to cover up for the majority of the time but you know it was it was eye-catching and so people were drawn to come over. In fact, at the very end of the night, just as I'm starting to pack everything up past nine o'clock, one of the ladies who was vending right down the end of the kind of corridor that I was on came over, came rushing over. She's like, oh my gosh, are you still selling? And I was like, look, I can, you know, what, what's happening? And she was like, I have just been wanting to come over this entire time, but I've been too busy down at my, my booth. I've not been able to come over you just look amazing and this looks great and I was like <laughs> sure what would you like um so it was that and I also got some other compliments throughout the night I had one lady who stopped me and she just said I just want to thank you your energy your personality the way that you look and the amount of effort you went into here it's just the lift me up that I feel like so many of us need at this point in time it's just a real pleasure to be in your presence like Seriously, that is what she said. And I was like, oh, wow, that is like the nicest compliment I've ever received. So, you know, I was, I was just being myself. I was just being a little bit kooky, maybe, but you know, just being that fun, energetic kind of personality and like just playing with the customers, playing with the kids that came up, you know, not just like, hi, welcome to my stall. What would you like? Kind of thing. It, I don't really like that. I was talking about my products in regards to how they changed my life and how I thought it was all a myth, but then I made them and then I was realizing that oversized scrunchies actually hold every type of hair and uh, that passion certainly came through and got quite a few sales. The next thing I learnt is no haggling. <laughs> I had one lady who came up and looked at my masks and she was like how much is the mask literally the price is right there but that's okay i said they're 15 dollars, and she looked at me and she was like 15 dollars for a mask and i said yes they are all handmade by myself and you know it was very clear that she was going to start haggling or start start a negotiation but because of the fact that i was just shutting it down right then and there and just saying no this is the price it's made by me i know what my time is worth and how much the fabrics cost she just stopped uh she looked over a little bit more and then she put it down and walked away and to be honest i'm not sad that i lost that sale because the thing is is that i feel like if you do it for one person and someone else overhears especially when you've got all the same sort of products they're just going to do the same you know and i'm sorry my time is worth more than that i know what i'm worth Another thing that was a great tip that I learned online and I put it into play was make friends with your neighbour. I only had one neighbour, they put me right on the edge and I was really concerned at the start of the, the, the market because literally there was no one opposite me and there was just like the shopping center to the right of me so there was like people walking by but there was like most of the action was down the other end and i was so concerned that this was going to affect my sales turned out it didn't which was amazing but i made friends with the lady next door to me who sold all of these beautiful baby stuff mostly and also um drink containers and that sort of thing Anyway, she was really lovely. A few times um, I looked after her stall while she popped inside to uh, go to the toilet and get grab a drink because she was by herself. Uh, she was very fun to have a bit of a chat to and talk about all random things. She gave me some little bits, tips and tricks in regards to the markets and what her feeling was on a few different markets that she'd been to. It was really, really great. Um, and you know, if I was there by myself, she would have looked after my stall while I would have gone to use the loo. But luckily I had Terry there or my mum at the start of it all. Another thing that I learned was listen to customers. I got great feedback. So I had two people ask for the wide headbands, but in black. So 
I am definitely going to be doing that uh, since two people actually verbalized it. Thank you very much. I had quite a few people ask me for children's masks. So yes, of course, like I am 100% going to do that for the next market. I only made, made male and female and they sold quite well. So adding children's into that mix, fabulous. Apparently it's very hard to find children's mask. I had no idea that that was actually a thing. So yep, absolutely. We'll do that. The last thing that was suggested, but I don't know if I'm going to do it just yet, is elastic headbands. I've not made them before. I'd need to figure it all out. And only one person asked for that. And I don't know. I don't know yet. I need to look into that a bit more. But the first two absolutely will be doing with my next market in less than a fortnight. So the next thing I learned was with the easels, make sure you go bigger than smaller. And you know, don't get the $6 easel from Kmart when you're going to be outside and there's going to be winds. Literally, it destroyed itself and in the process destroyed my pricing board. Luckily, I've been able to salvage my pricing board. E6000 works a treat on everything. It's a bit rough and ragged, but you know what? It's fine. It will do the job. I may very well invest in a new one, you know, in the next season, the next market season, but it will do now for the rest of this particular season. That easel was dead, by the way, which also brings me on to my next one. So is the scrunchy stand that I made. Firstly, my mother pulled it out of the car, car and just like broke one of the spikes off. Thanks, mom. So we, we like taped that down and it was, it worked for the night, but I mean, I only sold like five of those scrunchies. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some sort of other display, one that actually holds up the scrunchies and puts them individual so you can see them all. Kind of like my big board of the oversized scrunchies, but I'm thinking of just doing something a little bit smaller um, with not as many scrunchies on it, just so that people can see them a bit clearer and, you know, be enticed by those ones a bit. And also because of the fact that when I got it home, that had completely destroyed itself as well. So both my stand and also my easel went into the bin. There was no salvaging either of those. Uh, I think I touched on this before, but also having a second person is so helpful. And also having weights for your gazebo. I did have weights, they were sandbags. I think in the future, if this is something that is going to be ongoing, I will get proper weights for the gazebo um, because there were a few times that my gazebo actually moved back slightly because of the wind. It didn't fly off, which was great. Thank you, sandbags. Uh, we'll continue using those for now but you know, for the future. Anyway, I think that's everything that I've got to say about this market. I had a wonderful time. I'm sure you can kind of see that. I sold a lot of stock, so I've got a lot of stock now that I have to remake for the next one, which is not this coming Friday as per what I'm filming. So the Friday just passed, but the following Friday. So it's essentially a fortnight between the markets. So I've got a fair amount of work to create all of that amazing stuff. And hopefully I can have a market that is just as good as the one that I had at Forestfield. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, you know, market prep and market days and all of that, please leave the comments below. I would honestly be more than happy to do more videos like this. And while you're at it, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider to do so. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.